So today we're going to start chapter 10, section 1. Today we're going to be learning about the different lines and segments that intersect circles. So the first thing, though, we have to do is define what a circle is. And a circle is the set of all points in a plane that are equidistant from a given point in that plane. And that given point is going to be called the center. When we name a circle, we will be using the center point. Another segment that is a part of a circle is called the radius. And a radius is a segment whose endpoints are the center and any point on the circle. The plural of the word radius is called radii. So let me go ahead and draw a picture of a circle here and then label it with the center point and then also draw in a radius. Go ahead and add a circle here down at the bottom. So if I were to put a point in the center of my circle and call this point M, I would call this, name this circle, either write out the word circle and then name that center point, or just like we did with triangles, I could also just draw a little picture of a circle and then label the point of the center. So these are two ways to name a circle. Now I can also draw an example of a radius for you. The radius goes from the center to any point on the circle. A radius is usually indicated with a lowercase letter r. I could also draw another radii in here. Again, it goes to any point on the circle. These are all radii. So remember, all, any radius that's on here or any radii on this picture, they're all going to have the same measurement. So if I told you the original blue one that I drew had a length of three, then the other one that I drew up here in black also would be three. If I were to draw one here in red, it would also have a length of three. So again, a radius is a segment in the circle. Lines. Next, we have a chord. And a chord is a segment whose endpoints are on a circle. A diameter is a chord that contains the center of a circle. So a diameter is just a special chord. So again, let me draw a picture, and I'm going to draw in a chord and a diameter first. So if I have my little circle here. A chord just goes from edge to edge. However, when that chord is a diameter, it needs to go through the center point. So the black line is a diameter, but the blue is just a chord. They're both chords, technically. But the more specific name for the, M, for the one that goes through M would be a diameter. A secant and a tangent, these are both lines. So a secant is going to be a line that intersects a circle in two points. A tangent is going to be a line in the plane of a circle that intersects the circle in exactly one point, which is called the point of tangency. So let me go ahead and draw another circle, and I'm going to draw in a secant and also draw in a tangent. Draw a circle down here. So a secant is actually going to go through, all the way through the circle, and it's going to hit the circle in two points. So the red line is the secant. And then a tangent is just going to be a line that's going to skim along the circle and only hit it at one spot. So for example, this would be a tangent line and the point where it touches the circle, this point is called the point of tangency. So again, here's a larger circle. We've got the chord here that goes from 
edge to edge. We've got the diameter, which is gonna make sure it goes through the center point and it goes from one edge to the other. These are both always segments. The secant and the tangent are gonna be lines. So I've got the secant that's gonna go all the way through on both sides and it's gonna intersect the circle in two points. The tangent is gonna skim along the circle and only intersect it at one point. And that one point of intersection is called the point of tangency. Now there are also tangent segments and tangent or secant segments Whenever though they ask you to name something, just make sure that if it's got the word tangent, you're looking for a line. If it says tangent segment, then you're looking for a segment. So if it does include the word segment, know you're looking for a segment. If it does not, and they're referring to a tangent or a secant, know that they're referring to a line. So it's telling us that point O is the center of the circle. So that's why they're naming it as, we can name it as circle O, and it wants us to name each figure. Now, what's important is we're going back to our chapter one stuff, where we learned how to name the different segments and rays and lines. So for part A here, it's asking for us to give the name for segment OM. So segment OM is right here, goes from the center to the edge, and this would be a radius. Next, they're asking us to identify what segment MN is. And MN is right here, and it stops on the edges, so it would make this a chord. Notice that the next question, part C, same letters, but now this time it's got the picture of a line on top, which means now this line actually extends on out, making MN, line MN, a secant because it's intersecting the circle at two points, at point M and at point N. is gonna be the diameter of the circle. So MQ goes from here to here through the center, making this the diameter. Now, technically, this diameter is also a chord. But if they ask you to name the more specific name, the better name here for MQ, segment MQ, is a diameter. But again, if you list it as a chord, it would still be correct on the quiz. Next, we have segment ML. And segment ML is located over here. So this is where you're going to need to specify that this is a tangent, but it's a tangent segment because of the picture on top of the capital letters. And then as soon as they change that picture to a picture of a line, then it just becomes a tangent. Because by definition, a tangent without the word segment is a line. So make sure that you specify. And then lastly, point M, that is our point of tangency. It's where the tangent hits the circle or intersects the circle. Now there are, there are also secant segments, but more probably more often we'll see the tangent segment versus the secant segments, because more than likely a secant segment may end up being um, a chord unless it goes on out of the circle and then we're going to see a theorem coming up later on for that. 
Okay, next we're gonna talk about common internal versus common external tangent lines. Now, before I start drawing on this, let me just show you or describe what it means to be a common tangent. So, for example, if I draw two circles down here, and remember a tangent is a line that's just gonna come across and skim and touch the circle in one point. That would be a tangent for that circle. If I were to keep going here and then make it intersect that circle, this would be also a tangent for this circle. Let's say I call this circle A and circle B. So this line that's here, and I could call this line XY, I could say that XY is a tangent for circle A, and it's also a tangent for circle B. So this would be a tangent that's in common to both because it's a tangent for both circles. If I were to draw another circle here, or let's, let me just use the same. So let's say I draw another tangent to circle A, but notice when I draw it on straight, it doesn't skim circle B. So let's say I call this C, D, and E. So this line here, C, D, I could call it, would be a tangent for circle A, but it would be a secant for circle B. See the difference? So that's why it wouldn't be a common tangent, the purple one, because it's a tangent for one circle, but it's a secant for another. So let's go back up to the actual slide here. And notice here, I'm gonna add in the center points here. Put a dot in the center of all four circles. And then what I'm going to do to check to see if the tangent that I'm gonna draw is internal or external, I need to draw a segment that is gonna intersect the centers or inter or connect the two cent circles. So now it says to draw a segment connecting the centers of the circles. And that's what I just did in yellow. And it says if that segment, if the segment intersects the common tangent, then the tangent is internal. If it doesn't, then your tangent is external. So in the picture on the left, that black line that was already drawn for you, that is an example of a common tangent because it's in common to both circles. So it's tangent to this little one because it hits it in one spot and it's tangent to the larger one. And because that tangent does not intersect the yellow line this common tangent would actually be a common internal, I'm sorry, a common external tangent because it does not intersect that connecting line. So this would be a common external tangent. I could actually draw in another common external tangent. I could also draw another tangent that'll skim along the bottom. So this figure actually has two common external tangents. It does not intersect that yellow um, connecting segment that joins the centers. However, the figure on the right, this line is a tangent it's a common tangent, 
So the green line here is a common tangent because it's in common to both. And because it intersects the green line, I mean the yellow line, this would actually be a common internal tangent. And I could draw another one this way as well. And it would skim along and hit both circles at one point. Notice it intersects the line that connects the two circles. That's why we're going to describe it as a common internal tangent. Now we're going to look at the definition of congruent circles and concentric circles. So congruent circles are just two circles that have congruent radii. So what I mean by that is I could draw a picture of two circles And as soon as you label them and state that they both have the same radius length, then you can say that these two circles are congruent. Now, the circles do not have to be separated. They could also overlap. And I know it'll be hard to draw to, uh, to tell what I'm trying to show you, but let's say they were two circles that um, that they like intersected. So let's say again, I draw my circle here and then let's say I draw another one that's sort of slicing through it here. As soon as you label that these two have the same radius length, then you would say that these two circles would be congruent. So this first one might have had your radius that went from here to here, and let's say it was three, and then let's say this one went this way, and it was sort of like slicing through, and let's say it had a radius of three. These would all be examples of congruent circles. Now for concentric circles, this is sort of like a bullseye. These are gonna be circles that lie in the same plane and have the same center. So right here in smack in the middle is the bullseye, and then any of the rings or the circles around it, these are all concentric circles. So a good example of this is a bullseye. Now these are not gonna be congruent circles, they're gonna have different radius lengths but it's like a circle in a circle, but they have to have the same center. So next we have the definition of tangent circles, and these are gonna be coplanar circles that are tangent to the same line at the same point. Now, I know this sort of looks like the tangent line here in this snowman looking thing. It looks like the tangent line might be more into the little circle, but it was kind of hard to draw in PowerPoint. So just know that the tangent line goes right smack down the middle here. It's supposed to be in between, and it hits both circles at the same point. These would be an example of two tangent circles. Or you could have a smaller circle inside a larger circle. And again, this would be your tangent line. And then the point of tangency would be the same for both circles. Now, these circles are not concentric because they don't have the same center. The center of this little one could be here, and then the center of the larger one might be right here. So they do not share the same center, so they're not concentric. They're just tangent circles because they're both tangent to the same line at the same point. We're going to learn two theorems, and then we're going to do some examples. So theorem 10.1, again, the number is not important to us. What we can memorize is either what it states or the name. And the name here is the tangent line to circle theorem. So tangent line 
two-circle theorem. And what this states is in a plane, a line is tangent to a circle if and only if the line is perpendicular to a radius of the circle at the point of tangency. So here, if line BC, or it could be a segment, if it is tangent to circle A, then that tells me that AB is going to be perpendicular to BC. And what's going to happen here is we're going to get a little right angle that's going to be formed, and we're going to be bringing back our triangles because what we'll end up doing is forming a triangle, and then we can either use special right triangles or Pythagorean theorem to find AB or BC or AC. When you're doing the homework tonight, the last question is going to ask you, is this a tangent? And the way that you're gonna confirm if it's a tangent is to show that the lines are perpendicular. And the way that you can do that is to show that you have a right triangle. Either identify the three sides as the Pythagorean triple, or just show that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. One more theorem for section one. Again, don't memorize the number. You can memorize the name, and the name of this is External Tangent Congruence Theorem. And again, memorize the name or what it states. So the External Tangent Congruence Theorem. And what this one states is that tangent segments from a common external point are going to be congruent. So here, B is the common external point. AB is a tangent segment, and so is BC. So because they meet at the same common external point, I can say that AB is congruent to BC. If they're actually giving you measures, let's say AB was five and BC was five, then we would say that AB equals BC. But if we're just referring to the measurement without knowing a number, we could say that they're congruent. This sort of looks like an ice cream cone or a snow cone. Now let's just do some examples applying all of these definitions. Okay, so here I'm going to do this in two different colors. I'm going to first do part A in red. So I'm going to label OR with 6, OT with 8. Now also what I'm going to tell you is that OT is tangent to circle R. So because I know that it's tangent, this tells me that it's perpendicular to the radius OR. So I got a little right angle here. So if OR is six and OT is eight, for those of you who have memorized your triples or at least recognize that this is a scaled up three, four, five, you should already realize that RT is going to be 10. This is a Pythagorean triple. If you did not recognize that, then you would be doing Pythagorean theorem, six squared plus eight squared, and I'll say that RT is gonna be C squared, it's the hypotenuse, 36 plus 64, 100 square rooted, and C, which is our RT, equals 10. So we're going to be bringing back Pythagorean theorem and special right triangles, even though we're talking circles here. Now for part B, 
I'll go ahead and do that in purple. So I, my numbers that I've written on the picture in red don't apply now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and show you what it looks like and then I'm gonna pull it apart. So OTR is gonna be 45 degrees. And then they told me OT is four. So let me just redraw the triangle here for part B. Right angle, four and a 45. So for those of you who remember your special right triangles, this is actually the 45, 45, 90. Remember you memorized that the two legs are A and A, and the hypotenuse was A square root two. Then if A equals four, then RT, which is what I, they're asking me to find, is just four square root two. So the answer to part B, four square root two. Let's say you knew that the two legs were congruent. You could also do Pythagorean theorem here and get 16 plus 16, 32, square root it, and then this ends up being 16 times two, which gives you the same answer of four square root two. All right, next one. They want us to name a line that's tangent to circle P, but not circle O. So again, remember the tangent line needs to skim along the outside of the circle. So here, this one would be a line that's tangent to P. So would this one down here. However, if I keep going with this one, it's also tangent to O. So that one doesn't work. So the only one that's going to be tangent to P, but not to O, because watch what happens if I keep going. This one would keep on going, and then it would turn into a secant. So the one that would be tangent to P, but not to P, but not to O, is going to be line BO, or we could also reverse the letters OB. It's important that you include the picture of the line on top whenever you're referring to a tangent. Now it wants me to name the common external tangent to circle O and circle P. So the common external be, would be the one that I showed you at the beginning. It's gonna be line CD because it's tangent, because it hits both circles at exactly one point. So this, you could either name it as CD or DC. And then the common internal, I'm gonna draw in that yellow connecting line segment. So this is the segment, and if the tangent intersects that yellow line, then it's considered internal. So as soon as I trace over this one, AE is tangent to both. It hits circle O at point A, and it this point of tangency for circle P is E. So the common internal tangent would be AE, or you could reverse it and say it's EA. All right, so here it's telling us that circle M and N are both tangent at point P. It's also telling me that PR and SR are both tangents um, to circle N. Circle N has a diameter of 16. It also told me that PQ here is three and RQ is 12. So if I draw the diameter here, the diameter is 16. So that's the length of the whole thing from edge to edge. So then that would tell me that the radius would be eight and eight. And remember, it doesn't matter where I draw a radii, it's always gonna have the same measure. So if I were to even have drawn it so that it goes through the little circle, 
that whole green segment there is eight, which is actually the diameter of the little circle. And then if I wanted to turn that diameter of the little circle, which is eight, I can divide it by two, which is the first question it's asking for, which is PM, and PM is a radius, and it's half of that diameter, so it would be four. MQ is going to be, here's where we're gonna bring in our special right triangle, or our Pythagorean theorem, rather. So MQ, if I zoom in here, because P is the point of tangency, then I know this is a right angle that's formed here. Let me draw it this way, let me fix that. So if I draw this to the point of tangency, I know that PQ and MP are perpendicular. So now to find MQ, I can go ahead and realize that I've got a triple here, the three, four, five. Or if I didn't recognize that, I would have to do the Pythagorean theorem. So MQ is a triple. If you didn't recognize it, do three squared plus four squared equals C squared. Nine plus 16, 25 square root it, and you get the five. PR, this one's easy, you just have to add three plus 12, and the length of PR is 15. Now back when we learned the two theorems, the second theorem we learned was, now, to find SR, we learned theorem 10.2, which has a name. It's called the external tangent congruence theorem. So when two tangent um, segments meet at a common external point, then these two tangent segments are congruent. So PR is going to be congruent to SR. So since PR is 15, SR is 15. And S is just a radius of my large triangle. So since my diameter was 16, my radius here is half of that, and it would be 8. Yes, PR and SR are tangents. And we learned the external tangent congruence theorem that stated when two tangents um, intersect at the same common external point, they're congruent. For the last piece, NR, NR is right here. And because again, they told us that RS or SR was a tangent line, I know that this is gonna form a little right triangle here. This is also another Pythagorean triple. So this one right here, if I pull it off, 8, 15, 17 is another common Pythagorean triple. But again, if you don't know your triples, you're going to be doing a bunch of Pythagorean theorem. 8 squared plus 15 squared is going to give me the length of NR, which is going to be my C squared. So 64 plus 225, 289, square root it. 17. So either way, even if you didn't recognize that this was a triple, you can still do Pythagorean theorem. It's going to be very important that you understand all of the vocabulary, whether it's through a definition or if it's one of the theorems. And that is it for the notes on 10.1.